record on this computer. Record. Boom, we're recording. Uh, I wanted to see, I don't think Joe's here this week, but I'll give him a second just in case he is. Joe, are you here? Do you want to come on? <laughs> I could bring Faye on. <laughs> Faye's always like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Joe, what's up, buddy? Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's bring you in, unless you're already. <laughs> oh, there you are, my man. What up, bro? What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? What's up, dude? Dude, I. Uh, <laughs> if I'm being honest, man, I'm a little depressed watching this presidential race, man. <laughs> I found out that the red state that I'm so proud of actually voted more blue. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, dude, Arizona blue? All right, I'm out of here, dude. <laughs> no, well, but I'm kidding, um, guys. This is, this is not a political talk, man. We don't, I don't care either way, man. If anything, I'm just more paying attention to markets about it, and I'm just like, holy shit, dude. Yeah. So my thoughts is, is market-related is – Let's talk not about whether Let's you're talk blue, about not whether you're blue or whether you're red. It doesn't matter. Dude, I haven't traded in two days. Like since the election started, I just stopped trading. And you know what? Um, that is probably the smartest decision in small caps right now. I got to tell you. Like I don't need to fucking trade. Like I don't need to. And so I walked in today and I was like, oh, okay, do we have a new president yet? <laughs> nope. Okay. Fuck it. I'm not trading. You're like, oh, wait, right, we don't. Okay, trading. back to sleep. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Yeah. All right. No, nope, not trading. And so it, 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 uh, anyway, the reason for the rally, <laughs> even though it appears that Biden is going to take the presidency, but I'm not making any predictions, but that's what, what all the news like sources right? say. It based on what I'm reading, it seems like it is. Honestly, I haven't figured out the electoral college yet. Me neither. So <laughs> yeah, Jay. And if I have to wait until Friday to make a trade again, fuck it. I'll wait until Friday to make a trade again, bro. I'm not, I'm not hurting to trade. I don't need to trade. Here's the best and, part when you're a professional trader or you do this for a living. Guys, you might take a month off if you fucking need, dude. Seriously, you don't have to trade every day. If it doesn't feel right, it doesn't feel right. And like I said, Joe's a big cap trader, guys. He's more, he's like 90, 10 to big caps and small caps. If he feels like the market is a little bit too unpredictable right now, guess what? He doesn't need to, <laughs> Val goes, fuck the electoral college, attend MIC college <laughs> instead. Uh -huh. Dude, I love that, bro. Take as much time off as you need. The markets are extremely unstable today, at least in the big cap markets. <clears throat> Yeah, and everybody is like, oh, it's running. There's opportunities. Fuck that, man. The, the slightest PR that sways the market in the other direction is going to wreck the fuck out of everyone. And Trips, so I'm right? like, dude, yep. let's just get a president. I don't care if it's Biden or Trump. And let's move on. Let's move let's on. Get let's get on with our back to process. what yeah, things exactly. are going to be doing. And so, but the reason I think the rally is happening is <clears throat> and you can see the you can see it coming out of news sources and somebody said this in chat earlier and it made sense um and it seems to be that the market is is a, a, adhering to it is that even if biden wins because a lot of people fear biden because he's borderline socialist tendencies and so definitely um, that's why the market fears Biden. However, the market is rallying, even though Biden looks like he's going to become the next president. However, the Senate will remain strongly Republican. So if the Senate remains strongly Republican with the Democrat president, it's going to be the same thing that happened when, um, Obama was president and Joe Biden was vice president. The things that Biden really wants to push through won't push through. Yep. They'll get knocked down at the Senate level. That tax plan that, that Kamala is yeah, so like hot and bothered about. Well, like 62.5% for something like California, right? Like for 400 right. grand and over. There's no way. There's no way. Bro, 
I posted this picture last night and it was this picture of a popcorn ceiling and and it goes if you, your ceiling looks like this do not worry about Biden's tax plan mm. <laughs> popcorn, like in school <laughs> <laughs> like those ones that you try to tear down with your hands yes <laughs> or you it was like pencil stuck in if this is what your ceiling looks like do not worry about biden's tax plan if it looks like gravel <laughs> mixed with drywall yes jesus dude, i thought that was hilarious but anyway hysterical. the market doesn't fear a democratic president now because republicans appear to have gained control of the Senate still. So See, this is this is it, the beautiful thing about MIC guys is especially in these Wednesday webinars is not only is it educational, but we kind of like to make this like a talk show. Like we want to do free talk of everything like this because you need to think outside the box. If Joe's right and I love the thought process and commentary on this, I mean he's right. Like in all this uncertainty, like why would today be a market rally after like three days of down, right? So you have to think about these things. And Joe's spot on, man. Yeah, we don't need to trade. And everybody, here's what will happen. The market will tank and everybody's like, shit, I should have shorted it. And then the market will rip and everybody's like, damn, I knew it was long. And in the reality of it, no one knows what the outcome of this news is. And I'm just like, I, I don't like to trade when the Fed is talking. Yep. I don't like to trade when there's a major market event that we know is coming. That's a forward looking event. Once we get the new president, it could be a, a sell the news situation. That's what because I'm we are rallying into a forward looking event. We are rallying into a presidency. It could sell off. But and, that, and that's the, and that's the will coolest. It, thing will it not? Like, I don't know. It's just like, let the news come out, let it come out, and then we trade. Well, and that's the cool let thing. Let it come out, and then we trade. trade. That's, like, that's like waiting for a confirm, right, in trading. So, like, something like oh yeah. guys, like, which I talk about all the time, if something is really strong, right, like, look at APBO right now. Like, I have no interest in a short in this, right? Well, specifically, no, because it's a micro float, and it's been up for two days. But say this was day one. I'm not interested into the confirm of a death candle and a trend reversal, right? So this is the thing that process teach you, teaches you in MIC is, dude, just you don't have to trade every day. Now, let me make that very clear. You don't have to trade every day, but you should be studying every day. So you should be in MIC watching videos every day, correct? Now, when it comes to not having to trade every day because you're waiting for confirmation, who gives a fuck if you're not already super over leveraged in the market, either short or long, who gives a shit yep. what happens, right? Play the process, play line to line, wait for your confirm. And then no matter if, you know, freaking both of the presidents die tomorrow and Kamala Harris becomes, you know, you never know, man. It doesn't matter, but we teach process of what works. Line to line, small caps, big caps. We've got strategies for both, meaning no matter what the outcome is, it's going to be okay, guys. It, we can calm you down like a little kid. It's going to be okay. Yep. Time out is going to be over and we'll get back to playing again, right? Yep. That's it, dude. That's it. And there's a so lot is of the conclusion. Right so is the conclusion that it, has Trump won Pennsylvania, Georgia, and North Carolina yet, or is what what the fuck is going on there? Wait, say that again, Joe. I and didn't hear that. Has has Trump won the three states that still can't get their shit straight, or like who has won those? No one knows yet. Okay, brilliant. And this is exactly what I fucking said would happen. A month ago, I said, we're not going to know who the president's president truly is for at least a week to two weeks after the election is closed. You know when we're going to know the president? When everybody's already got a PS5 come November 12th. <laughs> everybody's going to have an Xbox Series X and a PS5 before we know who the president is. Right, yeah. The fucking PS5 is more prepared to hit the shelves than we are to count the president ballots. Is Dude, that is hysterical. Oh my goodness, man. It's just, this is embarrassing as an American. This is embarrassing. It really is, man. It's it, crazy. This is truly side you guys for, embarrassing. Dude, whatever side you guys vote for is totally fine. It's just crazy how at war we are with each other and the markets are going to, they're going to react a certain way. Now, small cap markets probably won't, but the big caps will. Yeah, dude, today, 
I honestly opened up small caps and OTCs for the first time in a long time. And I was like, right. maybe that, I'll fuck around and trade nice. something today. Because those markets don't listen to the overall market. And that's the beauty of those is if you want to go trade something that's not related to the overall market and still use the MIC process, then boom. I'm like, hey, what, 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 what are we doing, man? What are we doing over here? I never, I didn't end up trading anything because we got a bunch of construction going on at our house right now. Um, yep. And so like, I couldn't, I couldn't hear anything. And then we had to shut off the power at one point so that they could run some electrical wires. Uh, and it was just, I, so I didn't have internet for a little bit. It was just, dude, today has been crazy. So I left the house and I'm just sitting in the car doing this on my phone. Get out of here, dude. Joe's committed, man. He's dedicated. I love it. Man. I had to do something market related. What's that, Joe? I had to do something market related. Dude, let me tell you something. Even if you're not trading, again, you still got to participate, right? Like you got to learn, you got to study, you got to watch, you got to do something because every day is a learning experience. And that's what I try to tell new traders. It's like, I, dude, I, the thing that I hate is like people don't really understand how important like even the compound effect is, right? Like 20 minutes a day, I'll get guys that'll text me and they'll be like, hey, Tosh, I want to join MIC, but I can't join for three months because I'm going on a work trip and my mornings will be locked up. And I'm like, well, dude, you're just shooting yourself in the foot. If your nights are open, you can be, wa you can be watching our videos. Like, what don't you understand? Yeah, that What's Everybody wants to make money this second, tomorrow. Like even the guy, okay, well, so you know, at night, at night, I, I plan my fantasy football leagues with my buddies, right? And so I don't have time to study these things that could maybe better my life and maybe not, not make me hate myself so much. I don't have time for that, right? That, that's the whole thing. So again, it's like, I, I, need to go, I need to go put into this poll and figure out who I'm going to trade for my fantasy league today. Fuck that shit, man. Yeah, that well, shit is just like, Or the oh pool is God. you'll make $100 if you're lucky. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, great. Let me wait for four months to figure out if I made 200 bucks. Woo. Dude, but at least you can, you can uh, definitely shove it in your friend's face if you win. Right. Yeah. Oh man. I got a lot of bragging rights among my buddies. Yeah. You guys are all a bunch of dicks. Yeah. I dude, knew think that's good. Cam Newton was going to get Corona. In inner circle. Tell them that dude, you make 150 K a month. That's really yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, everybody's like, "Hey, Alex, you want to join our fantasy football league? It'll make you five hundred bucks." He's like, "Dude, I literally just like shit and made five hundred dollars. Like, all thing, I had to do was wake up." The thing that I love about Alex, man, that th I've always just respected this out of Alex, dude. When I was twenty six, man, I, I, dude, I was just a dipshit compared to what I am now. Alex has all the resources in the world to be the most arrogant dipshit prick, and he is the most humble nicest guy I've, like you'll ever meet and he's absolutely owns the world think about that absolutely do you think about that makes a hunt dude makes what what is it literally anywhere from 100 to 250 grand a month up over a million on the year trades an hour a day and lives a very very humble life and teaches everybody what he knows every single day on how they can be the next him and out, out of all of his friends, because I know all his friends, they're all my boys. Dude. I, I love it. I call them, I call them like the Armenian Brigade because, dude, you go up to New Jersey and they're like, they're, I swear to God, they're all like cousins, dude. And, and like, bro, of, of that group, of that group, I think George is the funniest motherfucker. George, George is literally the craziest fucking guy. George makes me laugh, like genuinely laugh my fucking ass off because well, he's fucking crazy dude, dude. so so you, just, you, so you have a guy who's making i love how he just puts it all out there he's like you see that girl over there i'm gonna go for it and he, he just fucking goes for it and, and then he like, goes for it damn actually, i think george is actually in chat you know, where's george i think he's one of these dudes but the point is guys is think about someone in alex's position george because george is rubbing joe Kelly in the right spots as whispers in his ear exactly so think about this <laughs> Alex has every resource in the world. He's young where he probably should be arrogant with money, yet he's the humblest guy in MIC. Humblest guy I've ever met, dude, for what he has. And he's your teacher trying to uplift and make you better. I don't know. In my podcast um, with Harry and James, I talked about my first encounter with Alex, not in San Jose, but on Twitter. 
And uh, I'm not going to lie, he left me on red, and I was a little salty. <laughs> That's hysterical, dude. That was <laughs> probably back in the day when we were like, dude, like, do you, like if we share all this information, we lose the edge. Well, guess what? Yeah. We well, it was it was when y'all had that Discord room, and it was my question was stupid. Like my question, like in hindsight, was it was really just fucking stupid, <laughs> and and uh, it had nothing to do with stocks. And it was like he posted commentary from that chat that y'all had. Okay. A group, and I DM'd him. I was like. Hey, that's a cool software. What program is that? And he just read it and didn't even respond to me. And I was he like, was probably like a, he's probably like, go figure it out yourself. But dude, for weeks, me and him talked about CVSI because this is when CVSI was running. And so I had talked to him like several times about CVSI because like I loved OTCs and he was like shorting it. And I was, and so we and him were talking about the long and the short and then just, out of the blue i was like hey what's that di what's that program that you took the screenshot of and posted it and then he just like never talked to me again and i was like damn i just got disowned hey, you like, just got disowned son <laughs> yeah nowadays man what did nowadays APBO do? I, I remember back in the days man literally it was a long time ago about four years ago when you knew how to make a lot of money in small caps you go can this information legitimately be shared or will it lose an edge for everybody? Kind of like, kind of like if I help this guy, does it hurt everyone? Right. And dude, throughout the years, I mean, MIC has been active and open. We just had our second year birthday and guess what guys, there's nothing we don't share with you guys and small caps are hotter than ever. And the strategies work better than ever. So this information is never to be hoarded. We created MIC because we were like, dude, we can we can really change people's lives. We can really help the the little guy, the big guy, the bigger guy. If if you are not profitable, and you're wondering why you're not profitable, how, just give MIC a chance, dude. Like you will see what works, and you have to eliminate the ego. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this was Joe. <laughs> That's fucking funny. That was like that guy on Twitter, on Instagram that like is single and he like DMs the hottest chick in the world, like Miss Universe. She's got 2 billion members or followers and she leaves him on red or doesn't open his PM and then he gets mad. He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Just some dude from Dallas hitting up freaking <laughs> Kate Hudson's DMs. Right? That's hysterical, bro. That's hysterical. That's fucking funny. Oh man, what so, would you say? Yeah, so it, what would you say, what would you say to new members looking in right now that have seen MIC, have probably seen a hundred thousand legitimate real testimonials, and still won't sign up? Like, what would you say, dude? I'm trying to figure out even what to say. What hasn't been said? Oh man, um, my the reason is is if you're watching the video that should be that should be if you're watching this right now that should be an answer enough that you should be a part of the community it, the fact that you're interested is enough to tell you that there is something that is happening here in this community that your gut is telling you join but then you talk yourself out of it mentally yeah, be, so because the best the thing to do dollar is just that room looks so much jump. better, right? Yeah, just take the jump, take the leap, take that, go for it. And it, you won't regret it. You won't regret it. Well, but, the, the thing but, that I try to, the, here's the thing that I try to convey. Yeah. Here's the thing that I try to convey to, you know, prospective clients, you know, members, look, soon to be members looking in. Who who else is going to be one of the creators and mentors at MIC? Who's going to get on the phone with you? Dude, that's me. That's not a robot. That's me texting you. That's me helping you. That's me making sure that your trading is up to speed and to see if, if MIC is a good fit for you. Are you able going to, to be able to get another, you know, a full roof service? Are you going to be able to get farmer on the line? Are you going to be able to get them on the phone with you? If you can, well, let me know. So the whole point is we go above and beyond. The thing about MIC is the customer service is literally 10 star if you can have that. You know what I mean? And sure, it's a little mm -hmm. more expensive than the... <laughs> did you just rate yourself? What's that? I said, did you just rate yourself? Well, I think I rated more MIC than myself, but hell yeah. 
but I mean, don't you primarily handle customer service? A hundred percent. I mean, if you're going to rate customer service a 10, I mean, are you, are you rating yourself? Dude, I'd rate myself a 10 in every one. Just ask my ex girlfriend <laughs> to hate me. <laughs> Just ask the plethora of exes. <laughs> <laughs> see their opinion. No, I'd like to think that uh, not all funny. of them want to burn me at the stake, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Just maybe get their word for it. It's going to be the Salem witch trials all over again, and it's just going to be Tosh on a mound of wood. Bro, for real. Faye's my new large cap tab partner. Sorry, Bao. <laughs> Bao, you'll, you'll always be my small cap trader. <laughs> you'll always be my uh -huh. small cap tabber. One day, I'm going to get Bao to go to large caps. One day. Dude, the thing is, the thing is, Bao freaking is a better large cap trader than all of us combined, yet he uses his powers for small caps. <laughs> Bro, his spot yeah. on levels with, with pivot points on big caps, it's like, I don't know why Bao doesn't have 40 screens and is playing large caps and small caps. <laughs> See, here we go. Here we go. Now, now you just called him out. Now he's going to do it. <laughs> yep. Bao's going to be on large caps next week, making us look absolutely new. <laughs> Faye's just modest. Tosh oh takes God. me as a tab want, see, just because I'm I funny. I'll comment on big caps, man. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Trend's your friend, man. Trend's your friend. There's no farmer, but there's there's trend. So I'm telling you, man. If we get Bow into if we get bow into large caps, the next step is just ease him into options. And then I guarantee you, we're probably going to see another 1.3, $1.4 million day. All he's got to do is make it into options. And the whole OTC thing will be right back at the tip of his fingers. Oh my God, man. Then, then like, that's crazy. I, I wouldn't doubt it, man. I wouldn't doubt it. I've never seen anyone pick, pick something up so quick. I think that's just having an engineer's brain, but dude, I'm telling you, man, Bao, like if you hang out with 10 minutes with him, like even just drink with him in a bar, he's already figured out where all the exits are, who has a drink in their hand, who's who, like what the players are. It's, it's crazy. Who's man. single, a, who's taken. Dude, he comes into a playing field and like knows all the players like a chessboard within 10 minutes. And I'm just like, yo, can, can I get my freaking drink, please? <laughs> like, I, I'm still trying to figure out where the bathroom is, dude. <laughs> Bro, all yeah, Bao see, did was teach me the process of am I teach me his process, which I learned from the videos. I didn't have one on one help from Bao. And that's it, right? And then all of a sudden, Brian sent me this thing and he was like, look at how well large caps handle these pivot points. And I was like, oh, fucking fuck, I am in. Dude, how cool is that? And it that? just went from there. Well, Joe, dude, why don't, I don't even know if we've ever actually really talked about that in a really long time. Why don't you talk about your journey at MIC, man? Like, you're, you were a member who became a moderator, was a really good small cap trader, but then was like, wait a second, I can make this amount of money, but then not have to pay 30% locates on big caps and use the same process that works for Bao, but just transition? Like, yeah, that was I mean, it. I basically just said it, but if you have anything more. Yeah, you to, said it right there. Yeah, great, great intro. There we go, done. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty, I'm like, dude, the introduction was also go. the conclusion. You should write movies, Tosh. It'd be great short films. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got this idea for a studio feature. So, Bing, Bing, Boom. Okay, movie done in five minutes. And done. Yeah, guys, we have a podcast on this. Funny, if you right? want to see Joe Kelly's episode on how like Joe met us and like the urinal story where. Joe was peeping out my junk, dude. It's like the funniest thing. <laughs> It'll have you rolling, dude. Seriously, watch this video, man. But the whole point All is... I, you, know, you know, the first thing I thought was, God damn, this white boy is tall <laughs> when I met you. I, th I, I was usually, like, dude, usually I thought Usually when I'm I was the... Room, people are always like, man, he's skinnier than I thought. <laughs> nah, bro. I, the first thing I thought was, damn, this guy's taller than me. Holy shit. Because it's not every day that I meet somebody taller than me. Bro, I've known Bao in like at least in person for three years now, long way longer than that, but at least in person, like seeing each other's friends or meetups and stuff. And every time I see Bao, he's like, Did you get even skinnier? 
<laughs> like, I'm like, probably, dude, honestly. It's the like first thing people know. <laughs> Bro, if you get any skinnier, you're going to lose bone density. You're going to lose bone density. <laughs> like, that's the only way that you get skinnier. I'm just <laughs> saying, bro. If I, Tosh if I wears tights that he calls jeans. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, man. Like, I'm known for two things. Anytime, uh, anytime I, like, hit a banger in small guys, Bow's like, all right, now go get a new pair of skinny jeans and a $20 smoothie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, dude, you know me so well, man. <laughs> I asked Bow one time. I was like, dude. I was like, do we have any questions today? Or yeah, anything, does anybody or? have any freaking trading related questions, man? Exactly. Never skip leg day, baby. <laughs> Skinny jeans are like baggy pants. To me. <laughs> dude, I'm skinny bone Jones, man. I'm tall as shit. I'm three. I'm six, three, man, but I'm a pencil, dude. I'm skinny, man. No, you ain't fucking six three. You're six five, bro. <laughs> no, it just appears that way. I'm, I'm so six skinny. three. <laughs> There's no fucking way. You're taller than me, bro. You're six five. Fango, Guaranteed. that image is very accurate. <laughs> That's hysterical. Guys, who has trading related questions? I talked a lot a bit. Well, I talked a lot. You two are arguing over the few inches I would love. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's what she said. Oh, yeah. If you only had one trade per day, what would you be looking for? What setup? If I was under PDT, I would be looking at swing trading rather than day trading. <clears throat> that, dude, that's – Joe, you know what's crazy? What you just said is how I built my first $25,000 plus account seven years ago. <laughs> so I was a swing stuff. trader. And that's how I did it. I did it short, yeah. but, all, but alas, I did it on big caps and ETF. So I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, that was how I talked about this in the podcast. That's how I grew my account was I had several accounts and I picked swing trades in all of those. And so I would learn to swing trade. Yeah, exactly. Dude, I did this. I would learn I would learn large cap and options and then I would learn small caps and I would find a good small cap swing trade and I would find a good large cap swing trade setup like the power gaps that we teach and use options to do that because you can do it with a small account, manage your risk and right let here. it grow. Large cap room, full on large cap room for you. Go watch all the large cap webinars on how to learn how what a power gap is. And uh, lifetime members, actually one of the lifetime members uh, put together an entire PDF of, um, of how we trade power gaps um, <clears throat> and how we trade options on that is in the options boot camp. It's all there, guys. Literally, it's all there, man. People, will, literally people there. will go. People will message me and they'll be like, "I just typed swing trading in, and there's only like three videos." I'm like, "It doesn't matter which fucking video you watch. Learn the MIC process, and it doesn't fucking matter whether you're day trading, swing trading, long term investing. It all applies. It all applies. It's a one size shoe fits all." I agree. I agree. We have every single resource you guys need for any way to trade here at MIC. And you guys just need to watch the videos, man. <laughs> Except Joe and Todd. Yeah, what size shoe do you wear? I wear a 13. Dude, I wear a 13. And sometimes I have to get a 14 if it's like a, if it's Bruh, like a sports shoe. I couldn't put one leg in the waist of your pants. <laughs> that is... <laughs> Like, I can fit your shoes, but I couldn't get one leg in the waist of your pants. Dude, that's hysterical, man. Exactly. Hey, dude, you got to rock the skinnies, man. Got to rock the – you've been eating too much brisket, bro. Bro, I – dude, when he – even, like, back in high school, I couldn't wear skinny jeans. I can't do it. My thighs are too – I'm too thigh. I'm too There's much thigh. thunder thighs, man. I got thunder thighs, bro. Oh, those I'm brisket you, thighs. These damn birthing hips. <laughs> Dude, Joe is thick. <laughs> here, here, here comes Val with the Trump thick. <laughs> Under PDT. 
<laughs> Tosh really do? represents us skinny tall guys. Awesome, Trevor, my man. <laughs> yeah, fucking Trevor. I do. Trevor is that other from Trevor is that other skinny, man. skinny like tall me. fucker. Yeah, he looks just like you. I'm like, damn, look at this son of a bitch. He's six five and he could hide behind a light pole. Dude, uh, uh, we picked the wrong career, Trevor. We should have been in basketball, dude, for real. <laughs> Bro, y'all don't need to be in basketball. You need to be swimmers. Dude, I was going to say 6'3 is like a freaking midget in basketball, man, for real. Yeah. That's like Allen Iverson, dude. Yeah. Yeah, you're a a forward at best. I'll just be a diver or some wide receiver. I would love to be that basketball midget. Yeah, but, Bao, everybody wants to be able to top tick like you can. So, everybody's got it some way or another. (laughs) Reality is – Reality is, and this has been scientifically proven, short people live longer than tall people. Me and Tosh will likely die at an age earlier than Bao will die. Dude, speak for yourself. I drink smoothies and green drinks every day. (laughs) I don't give a fuck. It's hard for your body to pump that fucking veggies all the way through it, bro. It's just more... It's more muscles. It's more effort for the body. It's well, more dude, strenuous. It, bro, if we're making this more like a podcast, so the funny thing is, man, is like, and I know, dude, people have clowned me for 30 years on this shit. I swear to God. The yeah, hardest bro, there's, part- there's nothing to be, don't worry. It, there's no glory in being able to reach the top shelf, Bow. I'm just telling you. No, but no you, glory know, you know, dude, there. the one thing, no, let me tell you something, dude. <laughs> let me tell you something that fucking blows, dude, being a really tall, lanky dude. Let me tell you something that fucking sucks. I used to be a gym rat, dude. To build muscle when you have monkey arms like I do, it is impossible, bro. It would take Alex's height probably one-fifth the time to look jacked than me because, dude, do you know how much more muscle you have to grow? Bro, it has been like one of the biggest caveats of being a tall guy. And is I don't even go to the gym anymore because it's so fucking impossible to put on muscle, dude. It takes forever. Yeah, Trev just said the same thing, dude. It's impossible. So my you brother-in-law is literally built do like steroids. You. What a normal like five eleven guy would have to, you know. It's just again, man, to each his own. Like there's there's pros and cons to everything. You have to bow in his it. top shelf joke. Bow, you know what? Here here's the deal. He's like uh, he he's uh, bow with his he bow is bow is the rich guy that buys everything on the top shelf that me and Tosh can reach for him to like get it down for him. Like he's the guy that buys all the shit on the top shelf, but we're just the guys that walk over there and pick it up. That's yeah, it. We just, we just pick At it up. At the end of the him. day, Bao is the one that bought it. <laughs> Bao's the one that bought <laughs> it and sent us to go pick it up for him. <laughs> yeah. We're just the guys that pick it up off the top shelf. <laughs> Oh my God. Getting back. Do you guys have any questions about trading? Oh yeah. There were some questions up here. Hang on. Hang we on, we do like to make this like a podcast, but again, this is a trading webinar. <laughs> there you go. Under PDT. How do you view paying for the locates with not being certain you will be able to trade the stock? It feels like it's more pressure because you're already down before you start trading, trying to see it another way. What would you, what would well, you Joe, Joe, let me take this one. So I've got a real, um, a real kind of blunt opinion about this. Guys, that's not a PDT or over PDT thing. Every single day, man. Why do you think Bao jokes about all the time of like, dude, the first trade of the day is to make back my locate money. Bro, that's not under PDT or over. That's part of being a short seller. You are instantly down on your money before you're up. You got to make your locates back and then some, right? That's just part of the game, man. It's something that you have to get accustomed to and just know that, yeah, you're technically red before you're green because locates are sometimes expensive. Part of it. What are you gonna do? I what think people do? need to do. System? You need to do what Tosh is saying, and on top of what Tosh is saying, you need to just trade one setup. Learn one setup that you can find, uh, you know, once or twice or three times a week. It has a regular occurrence, like it happens often. And you just wait for that one trade. Here's the problem with a lot of PDT traders. They get the locates and they're like, because I have the locates now, I can short it all. Fuck yeah. Yep. yep. And then it and then it doesn't work that way. Or so they what locate they do everything, is they go, Joe. They locate freaking everything yeah. and are pissed that they spent a fortune on locates and they didn't play anything that day just because they can. Yeah. So there it's two extremes, right? You have the I locate everything and go broke on locates. Right. Or I locate only one stock because I feel 
this stock is the one. It's the one. There's not any specific pattern. There's not any specific reason why that was the one that that person located. They just picked it. Like, this is the one that everybody's watching, so I'm going to get shares to short. Is it the pattern that you want, though? Is it the outcome that you're expecting to happen three out of five times? Is that the right setup? Well, and, and here's the thing, man. You look just because like the broken can... chart. If I was under PDT, the chart that me and Tosh always talk about how it's broken as fuck under VWAP, that would be like literally the only thing I ever looked for. Dude, a like that would be it. Percent. Like that would be it. The way that Tosh trades, he trades over PDT, but the way that Tosh trades small caps is what every PDT short seller should be fucking doing. The or way that anybody Tosh that just wants is to selection. Be... Yeah, That's anybody it. that wants to take the easiest freaking setups there is, man. And yeah. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Just because you can, once you're over PDT or say you just have enough money that you're willing to throw it low-key, just because you can short does not mean you locate for every single stock every single day if it doesn't fit your requirements. You know what happens? Dude, this is what happens. <laughs> locate fees <laughs> rack up, and then you're going to waste all your money, dude. And I have people that hound me every day in PMs. Dude, Tosh, I got a $5,000 account, but I spent 300 on unused locates today. I'm like, bro, just right now you're under PDT. You have to be selective, reserve what you know you're going to play. And some of the things you think, but you don't have to throw the freaking, again, you don't just, you don't have to throw the mother load at everything just because it's up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you're going to have to find that one setup that works often. And for me, I would love if I were to day trade under PDT as a short seller, I would love that broken pre-market chart. I call it the pre-market fader. Like that's what I've called it for the longest time because it's, it's not an all day fade, right? Which happens at the open. It's a pre-market fade. It gets that one juice and then it just fucking fades all the way until the open. And then you get that one decent push and then that's a wrap. That's yeah, all she that, wrote. Yeah, exactly. I think, uh, and I so think it's like, that's it. Let's see if I can show an example. Um, what was what ran yesterday, dude? I forget every single day the next day of what ran the day before, unless I write it down. Now, I, Arthur, Arthur asked, he said, maybe first red day. No, I'm going to say no to that. And the reason being is because a first red day rarely happens. Yep, so you more, won't trade for rare. months at a time. You won't trade for months at a time, and nobody has that discipline. I'm sorry, but no one has that. The only person that has that fucking discipline is Alex. Like, that's that's the only fucking person that has the discipline to trade only first red days. Joe, first check this out. Do not check happen out. often. Joe, this was yesterday. This is what are we talking about, guys? Every single day. What's the easiest account builder for a new short? I don't even have Zoom open. Let me Stock look at this. trading way under V. Oh yeah. Especially yeah. after something like a death candle waterfall tank. Dude, you get the push to view up one and done. You're done. Dude, if you did that, listen to me. Listen to me now. If you're struggling in your trading. If you did one fucking scalp a day, every single day, and closed your computers and said, I'm going to the beach, I'm going to work, I'm going to go bang my wife, whatever you got to do to get away from screen, <laughs> dude, I don't care what you got to do, take this one trade a day as a new short seller, walk away, you will build your accounts. It will be a grand slam by the end of the month. <laughs> Cloud. Bang my what? Yeah, right. Um, so now a lot of, uh, it said Safari cannot open page link. Is that I, page I link is definitely not inactive. Downloaded. You need zoom on your computer. So you have to download the zoom platform and, uh, yeah, install it that way. Not that he can even say, uh, not that he can hear me because I'm saying that. I was telling <laughs> I'm just, you to I'm type texting that. It, oh, me. you're typing it. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Now, the PDT trader with what Tosh is talking about, I see this in DMs a lot, and Tosh probably sees it too. It's They always skip like the first 15 minutes of the morning, and they'll miss the first pop to the right level, and then they'll short the second pop, and they'll always wonder, why am I always losing? 
Well, Bow said it. <laughs> Bow's the like, first one usually works. <laughs> Bow's like, I give away too much. <laughs> uh, all right, forget everything I just said. Join MIC, and then you will. <laughs> Bob, <laughs> you're fired. <laughs> Dude, you see how much we freaking give away? Oh, he was, typing, he was typing in, uh, he was typing in Maine. <laughs> Dude, again, every single week, man, we give away so much free content. Think about what I just said, man. You can honestly be profitable doing that if you were disciplined. But if you want to learn, but here's the reality: we can give we could give a thousand people this chart setup, but a thousand people, I guarantee you, nine hundred ninety-five of those thousand will not know how to trade this because they don't know the MIC process of analysis. Oh, 100,000 percent, dude. The analysis process is all about entry and exit. I could tell everyone every chart pattern that we trade and not a single fucking person would trade it right. Maybe one out of a thousand, maybe five out of a thousand. But I guarantee you a, a very small percentage will will never figure it out because they will overcomplicate it. They will overcomplicate it and be like, I need to know what the volume is by 945 to be able to trade this perfect little yep. situation. And if the pre-market volume exceeds 5 million, if the float is under 1 million, if the market cap is under 4 million, yep. and if the short interest is over 62%, it's 62 is a sweet spot. We need to know 62%. If it's 62%, institutional ownership is this, and then the filings, we've got aftermarket offering. Uh, then we have some warrants at this level. We have some dilution. And then it's like, by the time that you get ready to trade, you're so fucking exhausted by all this analysis that you're like, okay, where do I enter? And then you're just like, fuck it, just get me in. And then you get squeezed. And you're like, fuck it, short it. Oh, God. And it, dude, it, oh, fuck's sake. Dude, I'm oh. telling you guys, man, here's the thing about trading. <sighs> is you guys have to understand that they're, the more simple you can keep it, probably the better results you're going to have. It's not always easy, but you need to keep it simple. And as like Bao says, it's like having sex. You need mentored. I can't tell you, but please let me show you. <laughs> See, now that's the specific oh, webinar that we got for lifetime members coming soon. <laughs> the link is- New webinar yeah, series. Bao shows you the, the real in and outs, the real secrets. Dude, that's ridiculous. Oh, so the whole point is, guys, is like, here's the thing. Me giving you one setup that's going to, you know, give you some serious results. Yeah, that could be really good. But that's like saying, okay, in the real estate, you know, industry, okay, here's how to flip your own house. Okay, great. I know the criteria how to flip a house. Well, dude, th that's, not, that's not enough. You need to go in and see it daily. You need to mentor and network with people who are doing it. You need to see the reasons why sometimes this does fail and doesn't work or why it does work. It's that there are so many things, right? So again, trading is not easy, but it's simple and we simplify it. What I just said is a proven strategy that has built my account for years. But here's the thing. There's a lot of little nuances about it, which you are going to want to learn. And we teach that. That's the whole point. You see what I'm saying? Dude, it, it is just... <sighs> and the problem with traders is what Joe said. Everybody overthinks. Everybody's going to be like, it can't be that simple. It can't be that simple. There's no way you can make money on this every single day. Oh, Dude, absolutely. Crazy. Yeah, absolutely. They're like, oh, no, you need to have this special indicator that allows you to discover all the past history about this stock. Dude, <laughs> let me tell you something about statistical fucking relevance, okay? Here's the deal. The three fucking occurrences that occurred on that stock have no statistical relevance. <laughs> if it has, dude, it could pop three times and die. And this is the one time it rips your dick off and feeds it to you. Yeah, so this like, is why we preach hard stops because the one because, time where the blackjack dealer gets 21 and you get a 20, hey, guess what? 21 still beats 20. Why, why in a, why, ask, ask this question. Why in drug trials do they require X amount of participants? Why? Because if you do not have enough participants, the data is not statistically relevant. So you don't need all that past history bullshit on the chart because it does not matter. It doesn't fucking matter because there's not enough occurrences. So this like, I know how many times 
on occasion that it changes. Thir this stock has a tendency to push 13% at the open. Okay, well, where the, do I just short at 13%? What the fuck do I do? Where's my stop loss? I don't know. Risk it all. Give it a, give it a go. See where, it, give it, see a where go. it goes. Give it a go. Hey, give it a go. And I, drug dude, trial webinar starting next week. <laughs> bro, it, oh my God. And it's just people overcomplicate this shit. People well, overcomplicate well, this, it. Dude, Joe, this is my favorite. I got a new one. This is my favorite. Tosh, I can't join MIC, bro, because I've got a system that works. And if I listen to too many different theories and, and comments all day, it's gonna fuck with my it's gonna fuck with my process. Bro, you don't have a process, and eventually that thing that's working for you now will not work. Because if you can't hear other comments, you do not have a re repeatable process for the next 10 years. Sorry to tell Dude. You. Dude, if they Sorry. have a repeatable process, why are they even saying? Why are they even talking to you? Oh, why dude, I've got, I've, got some, I've got something in my trading that I have to focus on or it sways me reading other comments. Really dipshit because you don't have anything that's going to work for the next 10 years. You have something but that's going to work for the next three months. They texted you, right? They texted you, though. And then you hit me up. Like, dude, that right. Why are they hitting you up if it's such a fucking amazing process? <laughs> why are they hitting you, you up? Thank why are they you. even DMing you? Who gives a fuck? Like, like, why are they even in your DMs? Dude, do you see why? Do you oh see why we get God. passionate about this stuff? Because here's the thing: Do you think Bao needed to have to create MIC? No, dude, no. We did this because we want to make a difference. So, <laughs> yeah, they want to meet me and oh see if God. I'm six three. The whole point of MIC is something that didn't need to be created. You're six Mo five. 99% of services out there were built for a cash grab. MIC was built to create a legacy. <laughs> Sorry, Bal. For me, all you'll need is a standard ruler. Tosh, you'll need a tape measure. You definitely will. Just ask my ex-girlfriend. Just a standard ruler. Holy shit. You must be this tall to ride this ride. <laughs> <laughs> uh nick t is uh, there's trouble. some other questions up here hang on nick t i don't know what to tell you bro when you watch this i'm sorry but the hope is lost when sizing up what's the account size you should have uh joe go for this and then i'll i'll say yeah so when Sizing up the account size user, this is the rule I like, is when you have, really there's no answer to this, to be honest with you. There's no formula. It's all it's just about more of a how consistency you feel. Thing. It's more of a percentage It's how thing. you feel. Yeah, it's people, I personally, for me personally, let's say I had 10 grand. Once I grew that 10 grand to 30 grand, then I would feel comfortable to increase the size because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 10 grand out of 30 and put it in the bank and not touch it. And then I'm going to trade with 20. And then when 20 becomes 40, I'll take 10 grand out of that and put that in the bank and I'll trade with 30 and I'll just keep compounding because I'm going to leave money in the bank that I don't touch. And then, you know, people are gonna be like money in the bank doesn't earn you any money. Well, it's also not there for me to fucking lose it all, too, because it takes a while to wire it in if I'm fucking loaded up on a short and getting squeezed. <laughs> Joe's not know, worried about just... getting destroyed by inflation. He's worried about his own FOMO. <laughs> I, dude, I'm worried about me. I'm not worried about fucking, I'm not worried about socialism. I'm worried about me. <laughs> Joe's like I, like, I trust inflation. I don't trust my discipline. <laughs> bro, for real. Like the market will go up in Holy time. Shit. It'll take time. Me, I will wreck some shit. Dude, like that I is will so fuck funny. up. Like I will ruin myself if I allow myself to. I've done it. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I don't have the self-control. It's why I can't go to a strip club. It's why I can't go to a casino. I do not have the self-control. Dude, the yeah, last time I went to a fucking strip club, I'm never going again for the rest of my life. The last time I started dating the girl for two months and she freaking wrecked my life. Oh my God. You bought the entire prize. Dude, I actually, I showed up for like, room and then, bro, I oh, showed up man. for a cup of milk and I left with the goddamn cow, man. 
<laughs> and it was a heinous cow, dude. Freaking ruined my goddamn life. I will never go to a strip club again, dude. They want to leave home with you, and then you can't get rid of them. Uh, so basically, you guys are saying you always locate ahead of time and not in a trade, so to say. Basically, was long and then switched to short. What? So I don't ever flip bias. Uh, by the way, that's – and me and Austin have done, like, two webinars on flipping bias and why it's terrible it's, 99% of the time. Um, because it's emotional it's, trading. It's not process yeah. trading. Yeah, it's not part of the process. You don't go from being long to going short. I mean, it, it, yeah, it just doesn't work that way. It, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm just scrolling through here and seeing if we have any more. <laughs> just because I get rejected by a girl at a bar, I don't switch my bias and start hitting on guys. How important is historical resistance on longer term chart periods with in play former runners? For example, more than one year. I know where this question is coming from. And I know the room that you heard this from. And I know the person that says this shit. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to say this. This is, again, this is a free webinar. I'm not going to get into the process about that, but I'm going to answer this with a simple yes or no. If it's on the chart, it's important. I don't give a fuck what year it happened in. It's important. That's it. I like that. I like that. Joe, I wouldn't even add to that. I like that. And I agree. Thousand percent. Question Good. about stops. Let's say you're shorting against an outer line of five. How do you decide how much wiggle room to give it? My problem is I get to, I get stopped out too often. Well, uh, the way go I, ahead, Tosh. Yeah, you. Well, the way I do look, so the way I do this is here's the thing. So I'll read it one more time. Let's say you're shorting against an outer line of five. How do you decide how much wiggle room to go above that? My problem is that I get stopped out too often. So this is why we talk about inner and outer lines, guys. If you are hitting an outer perfect line with minimal wait, risk, right? So you get in and then there's wait before risk, you like before you keep going. Yeah. Before you keep going. Do you have a chart or something oh, like uh, something I, today? Maybe. Uh, what what was uh, APBO? I, maybe I can find something in here. Man, my computer's lagging. Yeah, what ran? What ran today? Let me just show this in the morning. Yeah, there you so, go. That pre-market's a good. Ooh, yesterday, APVO probably. Well, Joe, check this out because the reason why I want to talk about this is so I didn't hit APVO today because I actually wanted, man, I wanted. God damn, my computer's lagging. I wanted like these outer lines. You see these previous tops? I wanted things up here, right? Like the 1150 line and things like, wow, God, I can barely even draw a freaking, there we go. So meaning if I want outer lines, I'm gonna hit a little bit harder because I'm waiting for an ideal entry, right? Like a perfect entry with minimal risk. Or you can, you can start in the inner lines, but as Bao just said, dude, uh, where is it? Size down. If you're willing to scale yeah. from 1050 to 1150, bro, you better be fucking sized down because you're giving yourself some range. I'm waiting for here and I'm hitting harder than if I started here. Does that make sense? You kind of have two options with it, but new traders have the problem of thinking and dude, they get this from a goddamn furu because they come to us and they learned all this useless shit of every single trade. I need to give only five and 10 cents a risk. So then they use either micro size or full size with the same plan. No dude, to be successful, sometimes all you have to do is size down, but give yourself much wider stops and it will change everything. Yes. Does that make sense? <laughs> yep. I also, if you're, ask yourself, where would the chart setup be broken? Like where would my thought, my process or my, where would my trade plan be invalid? Like, where would this have to break in order for my plan to not work anymore? Usually, that's going to occur near pre-market highs, um, VWAP, or the previous closing price. If, like, you're shorting, like, a day two play, 
and most of the time you're looking at that red green level um day ones you're going to be looking a lot at pre-market highs you're going to be looking a lot at vwap um uh, any other key levels you can think of to Gosh, well, I mean, you know, again, man, pre-market highs, VWAP, you know, especially if it's trading way under as an outer line, these are the levels you want to look at. So when it, so Amos, I'm assuming, I'm this. assuming the question, if it's like an outer line, like it's, it's like an outer line that was like pre-market is still, pre-market highs are still intact. You know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah. I and sure just posted those lines. Five little wrist. Holy shit, man. Is that really the bell? Wow, that was loud. Whoa. Yeah, that's the bell. Yeah, this went fast. All right. Wow, dude. I didn't even realize how close. We're... You know what, guys? Here's what we'll do, man. We'll continue this in the next week. I'm telling you, show up next week. But dude, if we haven't shown how important your education is and learning from guys who do this in the industry every day, guys, I'm telling you, give MIC a chance, man. Text me at 213-458-5997. I'm going to help you. I'm going to get you in. And we're going to teach you not to short and hold some shit like this, dude. We're going to teach you how to actually trade. I'm telling you, man. And, and then as Bao said, yes, to that question, stop out at high a day if it breaks. Yes. And it, the closer you short to it, the less risk you have. That is called a good r, &R setup than trying to short, you know, way at inner line, scaling all the way up there and then stopping out at full size. You see what we're talking about here? So again, I feel like somebody that is shorting into high of day, though, would be trading after zombie times. It's, it, I feel like that would give case. somebody a real justification there. I feel like, for me, like if pre-market highs have to be intact, and that's usually where I'm going to risk uh, before 1030. Like well, if we break pre-market highs after 1030, I'm not shorting like rejections. I'm shorting like for first resistance plays. Yep. Um, yep. You know, I'm trying to scalp the range. So like I, for me, like if, pre, if we're made a new high of the day, like if we've set a high of the day and I'm now shorting that, I feel like you're shorting after zombie times most of the time. That's Dude, 99% of the time. Yeah. I, it, you know, and maybe it's like one of those like really broken stocks that you know you set a high of the day and then you're shorting the next pop into VWAP, which I understand now using high of the day is your risk because pre-market highs are way too far away. Uh, I would say yes to that, but I, I think if somebody were just to kind of like blanket statement that, it's a little too risky. Yeah, I agree. Uh, just just yeah. always wait for the confirms, the death candles, the major stuffs, the under VWAP, the major- Yeah, right, right there what Bao said. If you're shorting broken stocks, high a day doesn't apply. Bingo, 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 bingo. Yeah, it's pre-market highs always, almost always. It's VWAP almost always on those broken stocks. It's like, yeah, a high of the day doesn't matter because you're not, I mean, if you're shorting a broken stock and you're choosing the right levels, your entries should be damn near high of the day. And then it's just going to die. For real. For real. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've seen Tosh's charts and been like, God damn, motherfucker, got the high of the day. Look at this <laughs> son of a bitch. It's just because I'm tall and skinny, man. That's really it. Smoothies, dude. Yeah, look at Sava today. Or whenever the fuck that that chart is. Is that Sava? I know we're going three minutes over, but I think this is a crazy, great right? Crazy. That's a great example right there. Thank Let, you. Jay. I'll draw a line. I'll draw a line for you guys. Not to give too much in this free webinar, but bingo. That's yeah. during zombie hour. And dude, look, I mean, look, you've got a set risk, like a beautiful set risk at pre-market highs, like on the short side. And Maybe you hit that first pop there. I mean, I don't know the range. God dang, that's a big range. Mm. <laughs> Join I MIC mean, or you just don't. keep your hand on the buy button and go broke. Thanks. Dude, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, maybe you get that one juice at the open when it breaks VWAP and new high of the day right there. It stuffs. Like, yeah, maybe you, maybe you take a starter there. But, I mean, you're definitely out at that point. And so covering on would... washes. And then, dude, after candles like this, man, you should be cautious on any candle like that, bro. 
just yeah, it's, on the short it's, side, yeah. especially as you're coming through zombie hour. But okay, guys, we should wrap this up. We will uh, we will yeah, dive into this it. next week, man. Bow says his fat ass needs some pho, and I need some Jersey Mike. So we will uh, we will go eat and oh, dude, that, that Chipotle steak, here. fam. That Chipotle <laughs> steak at Jersey Mike's. Oh my god, that's my shit, dude. Number thirteen for me, bro. Hold the cheese. Yeah, I'll hold your cheese. <laughs> I'll bet you would, you sicko. Just like <laughs> Later, bro. Later, dude.